Hi guys, Mark Ownsman here. I'm a software developer and bootcamp instructor, uh, and I wanted to start our conference off like normal. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and throw out some of our uh, our stickers here for you. So I hope you uh, you guys enjoy those. Uh, and today I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the Vue Reactive object that comes in Vue 3. Uh, first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. As I mentioned, I'm a bootcamp instructor. I'm also the host of the CodeWorks Dev Team podcast. Uh, and I've actually been developing Vue and teaching people Vue in, over the last probably four years, um, several hundred students. And that said, we're really excited here at CodeWorks to actually talk about uh, the Vue 3 projects and start teaching those because we think that there's a lot of really great functionality that allows us to kind of change the architecture up maybe just a little bit than the standard and implement some really cool features and functionalities based on those reactive objects. So one other big thing to know about me is I'm a big D&D fan. So we're going to talk about the object uh, and the um, project that we're going to build out today, and I'm going to show you under the hood how some of this stuff works. So first and foremost, um, right now I'm building with an object. This is with the D&D API, and if you're not familiar with D&D, that's okay. Just understand this is an API that fetches some data, uh, and based on that data, I can take certain actions. Um, so this is all handled locally. I don't have any server or anything running behind this, but uh, I actually can create monsters, add monsters to my list. Um, so here I'm just kind of filtering down, uh, but I could grab you know, Dragon um, and several different things like that and kind of get the results as these filter out, uh, or I could actually effectively search. But uh, regardless, um, let's go ahead and just maybe add one of these things in here. Um, so I now have a list of a couple different monsters from my encounter. Uh, and as I click on their different attacks and abilities, I can see here, I can click short sword and I get a history generate of what they've done, uh, things like that. I can come down here um, and use the dragon's attack and so on and so forth. Now, uh, we wanted to build because our goal for today is to use the reactive objects to handle state management for us, uh, whether it's either in our local state uh, of each component or the global application state, which provides our single source of truth. We're gonna kind of show off how that works. Now, here I can also do the reverse um, uh, undo and redo. This is truly changing the current um, state. So if I look at this here real quick, um, let's see, uh, down here. So I can see currently I have uh, in my array of actions just the one action. Um, and then if I add one more, it adds, it actually is actively changing the state and we'll show you how that code works. So let me jump over to that code and we'll start talking about it. So. First and foremost, here we have our application state. Now app state, the goal of app state is to create a single one of these reactive objects that basically replaces the need for the Vuex store. Now, nothing against the Vuex store. We've just found that this pattern has been a little bit more robust and effective for us. And I'll talk about some of the reasons why in just a minute. But ultimately here you can see I have my app state. This is gonna be everywhere I keep all of my data. Again, for this app, monsters and counter monsters and actions. I also have getters. I didn't need them for this in that application, but just to kind of identify, this is where you would put those things. Now let's jump over to app. Um, so the entry point of our application, I'm actually noticing here, see we use our state reactive object. If you're familiar with Vue 2, this is essentially the replacement for data, uh, where you had kind of your local state. I'm once again using that reactive object because now those are able to be observed up above uh, and interacted with accordingly. And then I just simply return and export. Uh, as a part of that setup, the return object includes the state, and I just drill into it to grab anything. Here you'll notice I am actually bringing in app state. This is so that we can use the view dev tools when I'm looking at that component, as you saw on the other page, to see what the app state currently is and kind of look at that global state from my uh, component hierarchy. Now, to kind of talk about some of the other power and ability, I'm actually gonna jump over here to library. Um, now, one of the big things that we really like, and we actually use a service pattern instead of the dispatch pattern. So with the dispatch pattern, it's kind of that fire and forget, hey, send off this thing, magic strings for our, the names of our methods, and it kind of can get a little uh, and difficult to manage as your state grows. And it's kind of that moment of like, let me remember what my action was called and going back and forth and checking. Now by using services, I get all the intelligence I need in order to actually engage with uh, firing different methods. So here you'll see I see the D&D API service, which from an application standpoint is just a simple class with a few methods on it. The, that class then can call to the API state and manipulate it. One of the really cool things though is because as you notice in the other page when we were talking about the state, we can put JS docs in here. I can come in now and say, all right, well app state, um, and as soon as I do app state dot, I do get that full IntelliSense of what is on the app state at this time. Uh, what are all the properties that exist? And if I go into encounter monsters 
and we'll just say like at zero. Um, again, because of JS Docs, now I do get back that IntelliSense that I might be lacking another application architecture that's kind of just, uh, I think it's this, and I'm kind of guessing. Um, now you're definitely getting the IntelliSense around that, which has been a huge benefit uh, for when you're building out applications. So let me go ahead and remove that out of there. Um, let's jump back over to library. Um, the other big thing here is I have, can use await. So get all monsters calls out to a third party API. Um, and traditionally we might use a dispatch that would fire that. Then we could watch for when the value came back and basically use another computed to watch certain things to say, okay, cool. Once this computed changes, let me sh change this local piece of like whether I'm ready or not, or set that loading in the global. Um, here, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I really only care about the ready state within here because that's the thing that's basically allowing me to render that drop down list. Um, so I can simply just say, hey, let's await this action to occur. And once it's done, let's go ahead and then manipulate this local piece of data. Um, again, really beneficial. This is kind of, again, a more simplified application, but uh, we found actually in several different places that we've been able to use this, mainly in like using user auth and validating are they logged in, and once they're logged in, perform these steps. Um, so it was no longer a process of, okay, let me watch for when they're effectively logged in uh, if I'm fetching that from some sort of third-party resource. Um, so that said, let's kind of talk about the time travel, last and not least. Uh, and how we're able to manage through the state. So I have a history service. Currently we have an add state, and add state is actually triggered by uh, when any, whenever the state changes, it actually automatically is set up to trigger this. That's in uh, my app component, um, where it basically watches it and says, hey, on a computed for the app state, trigger add state. Now, all it does is it basically makes a copy of the current state uh, and throws it into the um, into an array up here. Now, I understand this is a little bit naive, but in the end, this is kind of the approach that we took just to kind of keep it simple and understandable. Again, I'm not using TypeScript, I'm not using anything else I'm trying to keep this as direct as possible. From there, undo and redo, uh, we're keeping track of, hey, let's navigate up and down the array. Uh, and as soon as in the logic and app state, we say as soon as, hey, as soon as an action occurs that we didn't intend for uh, future to be occurring again, we just blow away the future as something new gets added. So uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up my talk and time for today. Uh, go ahead and check out those reactive objects. They can do so much for you and they're really powerful. Thanks again and uh, happy coding.